Greetings, I'm Jonathan Speard, I have a lot of machines to build, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. Last episode, I automated refined iron from Tech Reborn. That allows me to make machine blocks and standard machine casings. I already know all the machines I need to make, and I have a layout planned as well. First, however, I'm going to need to make a metal press. Here's the setup. The metal press has a plate mold. Refined iron, bronze, and tin make mixed metal ingots, which smelt into advanced alloy ingots. Crafting two at a time ensures that I won't get random mixed metal ingots inside of my system. Advanced alloy ingots in the metal press make advanced alloy. Advanced alloy carbon plates and machine blocks make advanced machine blocks. I'll need six extractors, two industrial electrolyzers, a macerator. To make tungsten grinding heads for the industrial grinder, I need tungsten, which comes from tungsten ore. Until I get the industrial grinder, it can best be processed in the crusher, so that's what I'm doing now. This will be enough tungsten for now. Three tungsten grinding heads and an industrial grinder, two compressors, four pistons, and a rolling machine. For now, that's all the machines you're going to make, and I don't even need the electrolyzer yet. But for now, I think it's time to plan for all of these machines. Most of the machines require 3x3 multi-blocks behind them, and I need six different machines, so I'll just make sure there's six different spaces. Wires will come up in each of these holes. These two are for the 32 EU per tick machines, these three are for the 64 EU per tick machines, and this is for the 128 EU machine. I'm running glass fiber in each of the holes, but there will be transformers as I have in my inventory. I've dug a hole in the ground for my glass fiber cables. Imagine that, me actually running cables underground. Just ignore the sea of darkness generated by the cables. Remember the packets of 512 EU per tick are running down this cable. That's too much for all of the machines in my inventory. And they don't take transformer upgrades, so what I have are transformers. When transformers take a higher voltage and turn it into a lower voltage, they retain the same amount of EU per tick, just split into smaller packets and all the packets run down at the same time. Note, however, that a transformer will only take one packet of a higher EU per tick. So you can't feed 1024 EU per tick in 512 packets into an MV transformer and expect to get 1024 out. You'll only get 512. It just so happens that all the machines I want to run do not take more than 512 EU per tick combined, so I'll we'll only need one. Uh, rotated properly, of course. The industrial electrolyzer is the only machine that takes 128 EU per tick. It, at least, does not require a multi-block. The rest of my machines take 64 EU per tick or less. However, they take more than 128 EU per tick altogether, which is more than one LV transformer can make. Which means I'm going to have to do something kind of fancy. Two transformers in parallel. That'll produce 256 EU per tick. In 32 EU per tick packets, of course. Now I can place down my rolling machine, which doesn't need a multi-block, and my industrial grinder, which does. I'll need 18 standard machine casings, and 8 reinforced machine casings. Somehow, I have 13 buckets in my storage module. The industrial grinder's multi-block requires 9 standard machine casings in the bottom, 8 reinforced machine casings and water in the middle, and 9 more standard machine casings at the top. Ender tanks won't automatically output to industrial grinders. I tried already. I added an ender tank up here. Industrial grinders are a bit buggy and they don't necessarily recognize that there's water flowing into them, but eventually they do. I'm setting up two recipes. One bauxite ore makes four bauxite dust and one aluminum, and one ruby ore makes ruby, six small piles of ruby dust, and two small piles of red garnet dust. Ruby dust, red garnet dust, and soon red garnets. The rolling machine makes two useful things, the cooper nickel heating coil and the nichrome heating coil. It cannot be automated. However, I don't need to automate it because these are literally only used for making one machine and one machine each. With four Cooper Nickel heating coils, I can make the blast furnace. With those advanced alloy ingots, I can make an implosion compressor. The blast furnace needs a 3x3x4 multi-block of reinforced or advanced machine casings behind it. Advanced machine casings increase the heat, but not the speed. And the thing you need the most heat for is hot tungsten steel ingots. Right now, I'm at 2448 heat, which is enough to run all other recipes. To get into advanced rocketry, I need titanium and chrome. Chrome requires three empty cells, which are created with 410, and nine ruby dust for 25 seconds. This makes two aluminum dust, one chrome dust, and three compressed air cells, which are useful for nothing at all. It takes chrome dust almost 4 minutes, 221 seconds, to make chrome ingots in a blast furnace. This can be sped up by feeding more energy through the wire, but since it only accepts 32 EU per tick packets, I need more and more LV transformers. Though, I do plan to do something with that in the near future. For now, this will sort of suffice. But, as a hint for my plan, I'm making iridium. Meanwhile, I also need to make iridium from Tech Reborn for mechanism. The best way to make it is with iridium nuggets, which come from sheldonite in an industrial grinder. Iridium plates will also be important. For some reason, they require diamond dust only from Tech Reborn, 
But IC2 diamond dust makes tech reborn small piles, and small piles make tech reborn diamond dust. To make the iridium plates, I need to smelt up iridium alloy ingots in an implosion compressor. I already have it made, but I also need to automate TNT, and industrial TNT, which is cheaper. The implosion compressor requires a 3x3 hollow multi-block. Turns out it's a bit of a weird one, it needs its multi-block under it rather than beside it. It needs standard machine blocks on all corners, and plus signs of reinforced machine casings on all sides. There are no standard casings in the middle layer because, after all, there are plus signs, and standard casings, according to the book, only go in the eight corners. Finally, the last layer, and the compressor. The compressor may say incomplete multi-block, but it still works perfectly. The last thing we need, at least the last thing we can reasonably make right now, is titanium. In the bauxite electrolyzer recipe, the only things we really care about are the small piles of titanium dust and the hydrogen cells. The latter will be useful for getting helium plasma eventually. Small piles make titanium dust, and three minutes in a blast furnace makes titanium ingots. And that's it for today's episode. I know it was kind of short, but I'm preparing for a huge undertaking with advanced rocketry. That'll take a couple episodes, but it'll be worth it, especially to set up a blast furnace and a fusion reactor. I think I have what's a really cool AR base in mind, and I can't wait to show it to you. As always, if you have any comments or feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!